Good morning. My name is Daisy Smith. Thank you for joining the Sharon Missionary Baptist Church virtual live stream where Reverend Kenneth Boyd is the pastor. You can also join us on our webpage, SharonMBC.org, or YouTube and Facebook. We will now take you to our morning service. God bless you.
victory, victory, nothing but victory. Amen. Let's thank God for our choir blessing our hearts this morning. I'd like to draw your attention to John's Gospel, chapter 19. The Gospel according to John, chapter 19. Mr. Jock Totten for serving on last Sunday. Amen. 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 Bless you. And I always say the strength of the pastor is not what he does while he's here. It's what takes place when he's not here. So I'm grateful to God for those who assist us in this thing we call ministry. From John's Gospel, chapter 19. When you find that, if you rest on your feet, as we reverence the reading of the Word of God, I'm just going to lift up a couple of verses in your hearing. Beginning at verse 28. The word declares, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was a set of vessel, now there's set a vessel full of vinegar. And they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth after this Jesus said I thirst as you take your seat I want to talk with this thought in mind your issue and your claim don't match tell somebody close by you your issue and your claim don't match. You may be seated. This is said to be the shortest of the last sayings of Christ. I thirst. The Christ who has walked among us and time and time again shown himself to be just who he said he was. The Christ, he who was fully human and fully divine. At this moment on the cross, there doesn't seem to be anything spiritual, anything mystical or messianic about what's going on. It's very simple. He's thirsty. This moment on the cross is a reminder to all of us that there is nothing that we go through that he has not already went through. Amen. And it is in this historical context that John recalls and pins this text around 100 A.D., some 77 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Christ. During a time when agnosticism was alive and well, and he is writing to prove a point to the agnostics who said that spirit was real and matter was evil. And Jesus hanging on the cross in his humanity and being thirsty was a way to prove to the agnostics that this man was truly human, divine, and he was the Messiah. But at closer glance, we understand that Jesus is hanging on the cross. And just prior to this cry of thirst, Mark's gospel says that he let out a cry concerning being forsaken. He cries out because he's feeling a divine disconnect. And just maybe Christ saying, I thirst, 
is not just something human, but maybe it's something spiritual. And I don't know, but I believe that whenever you feel disconnected from something or someone that you've been connected to, it's possible for you to, th to be thirsty for that reconnection. Just, just maybe he is speaking something beyond what the crowd could understand. Can I pause and just gauge the audience this morning and gauge the room and ask, is there anybody in this room who has ever felt like you were disconnected? I'm looking for the real folk in here today. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I know you don't want to answer because you want your neighbor to think that you're real spiritual and that you got it all together. But I've got a feeling and a sneaky suspicion that we may be on to something here, Brother Deacons, with this idea of being disconnected to answer many of the questions that the church, our church, is facing today. Folk who are not committed, disconnected. Folk who complain all the time, disconnected. Folk who have no passion for church or the Christ, disconnected. Folk who get mad over the least little thing and walk away from the ministry, disconnected. Folk who blame everyone and never look in the mirror at themselves, disconnected. It's just January, Jerome. Some folk have lost their zeal already in the church, disconnected. Oh, I came to push it this morning. Folk who got time for everything but the church, disconnected. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what are you thirsty for? Just maybe he is speaking something beyond what the crowd could understand. Because whenever I've been connected to somebody and I feel a disconnect, I want to be reconnected to them to be reminded of my relationship with them. Have you ever felt disconnect in your own life? Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like uh, 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 what God was doing was not doing anything on your behalf. And at that moment, you declared, as the deer pants for the water, God help me in here, so my soul longs after thee. I, 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 I'm a witness that at times life feels like hell. And you question everything because God feels absence because he is not active. And you feel a disconnect and declare that I'm thirsty, God, for you to show me something to prove that you are in control even when life feels like it, it is out of control. I don't know how you feel about it, but every now and then you need a reminder that even though everything is out of control, God is still in control. Would you take a minute and encourage your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, God is still in control. Every now and then you need a fresh reminder that God is still sovereign. Yeah. But, but here is where I really want to go with this. Here is Jesus. Yeah. In a context that doesn't match his calling. God help me in here this morning. He, he's in a situation that does not match what he says. He, he's in an issue that doesn't match his identity. Here is Jesus, thirsty, if you will, when he claims he's living water. Must I preach in this place? Here is Jesus, thirsty, when he's already told one woman, if you drink from my fountain, you will never thirst again. Here is Jesus in a condition that does not match what he claims. He's now got to an issue that doesn't match what he says. Some of y'all looking at me a little funny, but I know I'm on your street right now because you claim he'll provide all your needs, but you got some stuff that you're worried about. You claim he's a healer, but you believe the report of the doctor over the word of the Lord. You claim he's a way maker, but you're always over anxious. You claim he's a deliverance, but you're walking around in bondage. You claim he'll dry all your tears, but you're crying all night long and you don't know why. You claim he'll give you peace, but you can't get a good night's sleep. Is there anybody in the room who has found himself?
themselves in a quandary because your issue does not match what you claim and your situation does not match what you say. When Jesus is on the cross, he's got a need and he is anointed. And I need to help somebody this morning tell you that your anointing does not dismantle your humanity. He's got a need even though he is the anointed one. He can't sow a seed and get this need met. He can't throw money on the pulpit and get this need met. He can't say money coming to me. Y'all ain't helping me. And get this need met. He can't speak a tongue and get this need met because sometimes you can't deal with superficial slot machine reality and religion to get your needs met. When you got needs, sometimes you've got to admit that you're going through. I wish I had some real folk in here who would declare that I ain't always walking around in the anointing. Sometimes I got a need to be met. Sometimes you got to admit that you've got a need that you cannot handle by yourself. Isn't it strange that all of Jesus' life, he's been meeting the needs of others. But now he's got a need, God help me in here, that he can't meet for himself. Because you've got to face it before you can fix it. Come on and talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've got to face it before you can fix it. He's got a need, and he declares, I thirst. He's dying, but he says, I thirst. And it might seem strange for a dying man to ask for water. God help me in here. But if you look closer at the story, you realize that he asks for water because he's not through talking yet. The text says that they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it to his mouth. Now, Eric, I, I discovered that there's something significant about vinegar and the anatomical nature of the vocal cords. Vinegar is not just something that is bitter, not just something that uh, uh, anesthetizes the pain. But when you are given vinegar, by itself, it has the same effect as you sucking on a lemon. Uh, it will put your vocal cords in shock, causing them to rub together so that when you open your mouth, nothing comes out. God help me. They, they were not trying to deaden the pain, but they were attempting to give him something to keep his mouth shut. I feel like preaching in here because they've seen enough of what happens when he opens up his mouth when he opens up his mouth folk begin to get over it when he opens up his mouth demons begin to tremble when he opens up his mouth he redefines what relationship is when he opens up his mouth dead folks start walking through the streets of Jerusalem. When he opened up his mouth, stammering tongues were loosed. He opened up his mouth and calmed raging storms. He opened up his mouth and folk got healed of their condition and they said we got to shut him up because too much good happens when he opens up his mouth. That's why I came for somebody this morning. I came for somebody in this house this morning. To just to let you know that's why folk don't like you. Because when you open up your mouth, hey, sh stuff start happening. When you open up your mouth, your house start getting healed. So folk try to give you vinegar to shut you up. But I wish you'd high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I ain't shutting up. 
I'm about to open up my mouth and declare victory shall be mine. Yes! 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 Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I dare you to open your mouth and shout glory. Some of y'all still ain't talking in here. I dare you to open your mouth and say hallelujah to the Lamb. you to declare in the atmosphere. I will not shut up. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. They give you vinegar yeah, 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 yeah. to try to shut you up. Oh, yeah. They offer vinegar like faith based initiatives to try to shut you up. This is Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, ain't it? They offer you vinegar. So you can have a meeting with a lying president in order to shut you up. They offer you vinegar and they offer you political offices to try to shut you up. They'll even put your picture on the cover of Black Enterprise trying to make you feel like you are an entrepreneur instead of a prophet in order to shut you up. They'll release a couple of black folk from prison and call it justice reform in order to shut you up. But God sent me here this morning because in 2020, God is looking for some believers who will not be afraid to open up your mouth He's looking for some preachers who ain't trying to make folk rich, but trying to liberate folk. Because when you open up your mouth, you'll speak against a government who will give other countries a place to vote. All the while making it harder for you to vote right here at home. When you open up your mouth, you just won't say that the president misspoke, but you need to call a lie a lie, especially since every time 45 opens his mouth, he lies. Look at your neighbor and say he's lying.
When you open up your mouth, you tell the preachers, it ain't about having a Bentley spinning on 20s. It's about liberating folk to live for the glory of God. Open up your mouth. Declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good day, y'all. That's all I got. May the Lord bless you real good. But they gave him vinegar to shut him up. But this, if you remember, is just the fifth word of his last sayings. He's got two more things that he needs to say. And our God is so awesome that he'll take what they give you to shut you up and he'll use it to blow you up. God will take what folk wanted to use to kill you and God will use it to elevate you. I just need a couple of witnesses who would declare, Lord, I thank you because what they meant for evil, you were able to turn it around for my good. I wish you look at your neighbor for the next to the last time and say, neighbor, he will turn it around. He ain't through talking, but they gave him vinegar to shut him up. But God allowed Jesus to take the vinegar and he used it to clear his throat. I wish you'd look at your neighbor and say, just let me clear my throat. Y'all ain't clearing your throat. I wish you'd look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, just let me clear my throat. The next time somebody comes against you, just clear your throat in their face. I say, ha, 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 ha. Just clear your throat in their face. The next time somebody tells a lie on you, just clear your throat in their face. I'm clearing my throat to let you know that everything that the enemy tried to do to destroy me, God is going to use it to elevate me. You may need to go home today and call your enemy. And when your enemy answer the phone and they say hello, just clear your throat and hang up the phone. Shout yes, shout yes, shout yes, yes. Look at somebody for the last time and say, let me clear my throat. Just let me clear my throat and I'll dance right in the enemy's face. I dare you to just clear your throat. You ain't got to get mad with folk. You ain't got to fall out with folk. You ain't got to cuss back at folk. Just clear your throat. <clears throat> they gave him vinegar to shut him up. But he cleared his throat because he went through talking.
And he still said, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. It is finished. And he died, and they buried him in Joseph's tomb. And he stayed dead three days. But early, early, Sunday morning, he got up and declared, all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Aren't you glad? Now, I need you to check yourself now so that your issue and your claim matches up. If you say, I trust God, then trust him. If you say, I love God, and I love Sharon, then act like it. Don't let your issue and your claim not match. I know everybody wasn't going to shout, but I clap. I feel that thing all down in my feet. Yeah! Put your arms around somebody for the last time. As a neighbor, I got to make sure that my issue and my claim matches up. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my way maker. He is a fortress in the time of trouble. And I will not fear, though an enemy should encamp himself all around me. The Lord will build up a standard. you hungry for? Jesus. You just want a good shout? You want me to come in and entertain you and get a good shout? You can make out the door. You don't even remember nothing I said. But the world is falling apart all around us. Our political system is the worst it's been in the country, in the history of this country. And if we don't pay attention to what's happening, you're going to be farther behind than you are right now. You need to pay attention. You should have such a thirst for God and a boldness for God that you say, Lord, what do you need me to do? I'm willing to do it. Because that's what God uses. God uses our hands, our mouth, our feet, 
And it ain't just the pastor. So this altar call right now is for those who have a thirst. Those who hunger. And I want to see who's moving or who's going to wait and look and see who's moving. I, 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 want you, I want to see who's moving in here today. Because we cannot continue to operate how we have operated. This lackadaisical, I'll wait and see if anybody else is going to do something. And if somebody asks me, maybe I will. Or maybe I won't. Because too many of us, our conditions and our speech and our lives does not match our claims. It's not about you having a title in the church. God looking for somebody who will serve. Somebody who will worship. Somebody who will have an effect on somebody. When is the last time you invited somebody to church? Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. When is the last time you invited somebody who you know don't go to church? Nowhere. Say, yo, won't you come and go with me to church? Is it because you're ashamed? Is it because you really don't believe what you say you believe? I don't know what it is, but your issue and your claim has got to match up. Grab hands with somebody close by you. I'm just as serious as I can be. I'm not fussing. I'm just telling you what God told me to tell you. You got to long to be reconnected to him in a way that ain't nobody got to ask you. You do it because you can't help but do it. Your issue and your claim got to match. You got to have a thirst and a hunger for righteousness. But Jesus said, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So God, here we are, touching and agreeing. The enemy has caused a disconnect. But here we are standing around this altar, thirsty and longing to be connected back to you. God, we bind all the distractions that have kept us from being toward you like you are toward us. Because you're not slowful to wake us up in the morning. You're not slowful to take care of all of our needs. God, help us not to be slowful any longer. We bind the spirit of lackadaisicalness in the name of Jesus. We recommit ourselves to you, oh God. I need you praying for yourself right now. I need you praying over your own life right now. I need you making a vow to God right now while you stand at this altar of what you're going to do. What's your claim? I vow to praise you in all that I go through. Play it every. I need you to be praying. I need you opening up your mouth. I need you praying at this altar right now. Don't wait on me. I need you praying. I need you declaring over your own life. You got to stop playing with the devil. You got to make some decisions over your own life. Come on, come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Cry out to him. He will answer you. That thing you need to be fixed in your family, it's right here at this altar. It can be fixed right now. God waiting on you to do something. 
He's waiting on you to sacrifice something. We pray, oh God, that you would set on us today. Don't let us rest until we commit ourselves back to you. We thirst today for your spirit. We thirst for your direction. We thirst, oh God, for the passion that we felt when we first came to know you. Restore, oh God, the joy of our salvation. We'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. In Jesus' name. Everyone said together, amen. amen. Amen again. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise.